Hi, this is Luis Fernandez and I'm a field engineer with Go Engineer. In this quick tip video I will be outlining how to remove the support tower that grows alongside your part to support a hole or text at the top of the part using the Insight software. You might ask yourself, why would I want to do that? A few reasons are to speed up your build and reduce model and support material consumption. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is open up my STL file. I'm going to go ahead and hit File Open, browse for my STL file here. As you can see, the software brought in the part laying down flat. This is probably the best way to build something like this, but to simulate a hole in text at the top of the part, I'm going to change the orientation. I'm going to click the Orient button and hit Bottom, and then click on this surface here to make that the bottom. At this point, we can see that the hole is now up top. Let me also spin this part around so you can see there's a logo behind the part. Okay, so now at this point we can see that we're going to be using our Fortis 400 MC running ABS M30 at 10,000 resolution with the solid interior fill and smart supports. Now let me go ahead and green flag this part. So what the software is doing now is slicing my part, creating supports, and running my toolpaths. Once the software is done with this, I want to show you what the support structures look like. We are currently viewing a single layer, so I'm going to click on the View All Layers button to show you the end result. Now we can see that the software has created these support towers to support the top of the hole in text. All this support material is not necessary in most cases and we could do without the tower growing alongside the part. Before I show you how to delete the support tower, I want to show you a time estimate for this part. Here we can see that this is going to take a little bit over seven and a half hours to build. It's going to consume about 2.8 cubic inches of model material and about 2.9 cubic inches of support material. Now let's go ahead and remove this support tower. I'm going to go into support, setup, and delete my support structures for now. Inside is giving me a warning that toolpaths will also be deleted. I'm going to say yes as we will regenerate toolpaths in a minute. Okay, so now that Insight has deleted my support structures, I will click on the advanced settings button and this new window will appear. Now what we want to do is change the scroll support settings from small only to no. Then we can go ahead and hit this green check mark to save the settings. Now it's time to regenerate my support structures. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this button here. And now you can see that it is no longer creating those support towers to support the text and the hole up top. This will actually reduce the build time and material consumption. Let's go ahead and regenerate toolpaths so we can get a time estimate for this new part. I'm going to go ahead and click view all layers so we can make sure that it's getting me a time estimate for this new version. I'm going to go into toolpaths, estimate time, and click OK. As you can see we are not only just saving time but we are also saving material consumption and support material consumption. The reason why we are saving all around is because the machine doesn't have to do a tip swap for 500 plus layers. As you can see, this part has a total of 605 layers, so if we had to build support for 500 plus layers, you can see how that can slow down the build and add unnecessary material consumption. Just a brief description on what a tip swap is, when the machine needs to switch from building model material to support material, it goes to the purge location wipes the model tip, then purges out a little bit of support material, and wipes the support tip. Then it is ready to return to the part and build the support layer. Now when the machine needs to go back from support material to model material, it has to do the same thing. This is also the reason why we are not only saving on support material, but also on model material, as it is not purging as many times throughout the whole part. At this point we can go ahead and hit the build button to send it over to control center. And now we can go ahead and insert other CMB files, make copies, or even go back to inside and process other parts. Alright, so there you have it. You now know how to remove the support tower to reduce build times and material consumption. Again, this is Luis Fernandez with Go Engineer. Hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.